Hello everyone, we will continue the topic modulization techniques and in the previous videos we finished with includes, we finished with function modules. Now it's a turn for the subroutines. Subroutine is also also a modulization technique and we all know why why we are going for modulization techniques so that we can reduce the code redundancy we can maintain the code in the effective manner that's why we are always always preferring modulization technique a subroutine is a modulization unit within the program itself. Subroutine is a modulization unit within the program itself. What is the meaning of this line? It means we will go for subroutine in the program itself. There is no separate transaction code to create a subroutine. Suppose simple example. When we created the function module, we have a separate transaction code. That is SC37. We created the function module through SC37 transaction code. And then we used the function module inside the program through the pattern button. But in case of subroutine, there is no separate transaction code in the program itself. You need to create a subroutine. Suppose if I will show you the example as of now, this is our program. And in this program itself, we are creating the subroutine. We are not going for any separate transaction code to create the subroutine. Now, next point is where, where we will write the logic of the subroutine. Subroutine is a block of code introduced by form and ends with end form. It means we will write the logic of the subroutine always between form and end form. If I will show you as of now, you can see we have the subroutine. We have the subroutine add and we are writing the logic of the subroutine between form and end form. If you remember, when we have the function module, the logic of the function module is always, always between function and end function. If you see, we have function and end function. In between this, we are writing the logic of the function module. In object-oriented programming, whenever we have the methods, we will always write the logic between method and end method. Now, in case of subroutine, we will always, always write the logic between form and end form. This add is the name of the subroutine. Anyways, whenever we will do the practical, you will come to know. Now, our next is what are the various types of subroutines? So subroutines are of two types. First one is internal subroutine and the second one is external subroutine. Now, what is internal subroutine and what is external subroutine? Word itself is saying internal subroutine. It means they will be defined and used in the same program. So internal subroutines are in one program, one program. Means in the same program, we will define and use, they will be called as internal subroutine. Now, what is external subroutine? External subroutine means the subroutines 
which will be created in one program and used in the another program. Word itself is saying external. Means we will create in one program and yes, we will be able to use in the another program. They are called as external subroutines. Now, we will jump on to the syntax of the subroutine. What is the syntax of the subroutine? Firstly, we will see the syntax of subroutine without parameters. Then we will see the syntax of subroutine with parameters. Now, generally in the interview, when we ask people, just tell us what are the various types of subroutine. People will say subroutine with parameter, subroutine without parameter. They are not the type of subroutine. Subroutine types is internal and external. Just we covered syntaxes. Yes, we can create a subroutine without parameter also. We can create a subroutine with parameter also. Without parameter means what? We will not go for input and output parameter. Just we will simply, simply create a subroutine. But whenever we will go for with parameter, with parameter means we will go for input parameter, we will go for output parameter, that is subroutine with parameters. Now, what is the syntax of subroutine without parameters? Whenever we will go for subroutine, the first keyword which we will always always give is perform perform and after that you need to give the name of the subroutine perform name of the subroutine now if i will show you this example you can see perform is a keyword and we gave the name of the subroutine. But the name of the subroutine, add, add. Once you will double click, system will ask you to create the subroutine. Once you will create, you will get form and end form. And in between this, you will write the logic. Anyways, we will do the practical for the same. As of now, we are just learning the syntax. We are just seeing the syntax of subroutine without parameter. Have you seen? We have not given any input and output parameters with the subroutine. We just gave perform name of the subroutine. We have form and end form. Form name of the subroutine and form and in between this we have the logic of the subroutine so perform is a keyword add is name of the subroutine and in between this form and end form we have the logic of the subroutine if i will show you in the system you can see the syntax perform add Perform is a keyword. Add is the name of the subroutine. Once I will double click, you can see it is navigating to form and end form. And in between this, we have the logic of the subroutine. Anyways, whenever we will do the practical, I will show you yes, how we can create a subroutine. This is without parameters. Without parameter means what? We are not passing any input and output to this particular subroutine. So what is the summary of this particular video? In this video, we started with subroutines. First important point we covered, anyone can ask in the interview, yes, what is the difference between subroutine and function module? subroutine there is no transaction code there is no dedicated transaction code there is no workbench tool to create a subroutine but for function module 
we have a separate workbench tool or transaction code that is SC37. In the ABAP editor itself, you need to create a subroutine. There is no separate transaction code. You will always write the logic of the subroutine between form and end form. After that, we covered, we have two types of subroutine, internal, external. Internal means they will be defined and used in the same program. External means they will be defined in one program and they will be used in another program. After that, we came on to the syntax. And as of now, we covered the syntax of without parameters only and never tell in any interview that subroutine is with parameter and without parameter. They are the just syntaxes. Yes. And whenever we will go for subroutine, perform is the keyword. Then we have to give the name of the subroutine. When you double click on the name of the subroutine, you will get form and end form. And in between that, you can write the logic. In the next video, we will learn the syntax of subroutine with parameters. And then we will start with the practical part for the same. So that's it in this video. Thank you.